Williams. I am the uh, chair of the instructional technology team. Hi, I'm Tyler Gaviria. I'm a Spanish teacher. Hi, I'm Kimberly Shaw. I am a physical education and health teacher. Cool. Hi, I'm Andrew Gaviria. I'm math and science education. That's me. And I'm also math. Sweet. So I'm Drew Wallace, and I am the director of sales and education here at NWA 3D. So um, we're going to kind of go through the process of what 3D printing looks like and kind of the different steps and stuff like that. And then we'll actually be able to slice our models and then print them too. So um, okay. do you guys have, first question, uh, a Windows or a Mac computer? Windows. Perfect. And then do you all have admin capabilities on there? No. Well, super user. Okay. You'll we can download software. Okay, cool. You'll just be able to need to uh, install a program on there. So that's it. Um, that's okay. the to, to, to install. Because the one program that we're going to use is called Cura, um, which we're going to get to here in a second. So um, with 3D printing, there's basically four steps that it can be broken down to. And there's a bunch of little steps in there, but basically four big steps. The first one is the biggest and the longest and the one that takes the most time and the one that y'all just did, which is designing a model. So actually creating that 3D model and figuring out how it's going to work and figuring out different perspective. Like these two things might look like they're touching, but they're not and, uh, and stuff like like that so going well, through the process um, last the 3D training it took us an hour just to download Cura if that's the program we were using so we were hoping that that would not be part of this this would be the actual uh, printing because that's the part we didn't get it's on the SD cards so it's already there so if you guys have the SD cards Cura is already we on don't the have the SD cards you don't have the SD cards because we won't be able to print without the SD cards because that's how it, the printers read it. So it's basically like the first big step is designing something. And then you have to take that file and you have to put that in Cura. And Cura is called a slicing program. And that basically codes the file for the 3D printer. So you have to have it to be able to 3D print because you're taking your three-dimensional model and converting it into what's called G-code. And that's a micro SD here. Is there, is there a place that fits a regular SD card? No, oh, it's the micro SD. That's the one I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay, but we don't have to take that out, right? We will. Yeah, we'll be using it. Yeah, totally. This is going to be hands-on, so you guys are going to be printing everything today. No, no. What I'm saying is the micro SDs, we don't have... Oh, yeah, we do. We do have a micro SD. Uh, yeah, you know, there are USB readers, too, that came with the printers that you guys have. Both USB and... No, I'm talking about on our computer. Well, it, there's a dongle that, that came with them. You guys should have six dongles um, to be able to use with the micro SD cards. And that's what we'll use. That's the third step. So once you create a file, and then we're going to take that file and we're going to put it in Cura. Cura is the coding software, the slicing program. And then okay. you're going to transfer it to the printer. And transferring it to the printer is where you're going to put it on the micro SD cards. And you'll use the, uh, the SD card dongles to transfer stuff back and forth. And then okay. once you have it transferred back and forth, then the fourth step is where you're going to hit print on the printer and you're actually going to print the model. So the whole process of 3D printing is broken down into those four steps. You have to create a model in a program like Tinkercad. You're gonna slice a model in a program like Cura and then you're gonna transfer the model using the micro SD card and then you're gonna print the model on the printer itself. Um, so let's go ahead and track down the dongles um, and the micro SD cards. So the micro SD cards, they click in and out of the printer. So they go right here. You can see right here underneath where this knob is. Oh, I'm sorry. It clicks in and clicks out. Right here. And sorry, then. sorry, sorry. I'm not. We're not seeing you. Yeah, we saw the micro SD cards. It yeah. Looks out. And then you'll take that out and you'll use one of the SD card readers, which looks like either this, or they might be blue or pink, or one of the SD cards. I have those. I have no idea where they are. You guys have seven of these. Of these readers. Um, hold on one second. I need to. Yeah, so we'll need one of these. One of these. Readers. They might look like this. They might also look blue or pink. And we'll need at least one of them so we can transfer our files back and forth from the printer to the computer and vice versa. Yeah, we just don't have the adapters that go into our computer. Or if we do, we don't know where they are. Okay. So, anyway, um, yeah, so we're looking for that. Can we go ahead and do something else while we're searching for that? Um, well, it's, we'll have to download Cura if we can't find the adapters. So we can work on downloading Cura if you want, but you guys said it takes a while in your network. Um, yeah, literally an hour last time we did it. So we were having to go straight into <laughs> No, like you have to have Cura as the program that it converts the file with. And that's Do you think 
I'm thinking what I would prefer to do is to download Cura not through this, but like us take our time to do that and then have the training once we have Cura downloaded. We can do that, yeah. Oh, if you yeah, because that was very, I mean, like no one wanted to use the 3D printers after our last training. It was <laughs> well, so frustrating. Yeah, no, well, that's what we're here for. See, these sessions are unlimited. So you guys okay. have any training sessions that you guys need. Like they're literally unlimited for life. Like we could do a training session with every one of your classes. Like that, that's, that's what okay. we do. Um, so yeah, we could, we definitely got your back. And when, what we're, uh, trying to help with is to, so you don't get frustrated because we know it can be really frustrating. Trust me. I know it can be really frustrating with 3d printing. So we want to try to make it a lot easier, um, to work through that process and stuff. So if you guys want to take a couple minutes and see if you can track down the readers, because if you guys can find the readers, Cura is on all of the SD cards and then you guys can just e download it right away. Do you guys want to see if you can find one of the micro SD card readers? Because you guys are just need one, and then that'll be enough to move from computer to computer. We got it on our computer. One? Just hold it up online. Okay. Right, so they need it on there. So, um, yeah. Do you remember what was what was so frustrating about downloading it last time? I mean, there was. There and was, it takes a little. It takes some time, but we want also to want to download not the newest version because they just updated Cura again, and our user manuals and everything, it'll work with the printers fine, but our user manuals and stuff aren't updated to the newest version of Cura yet. So you wanna make sure that you update, that you download Cura 15.4.6, which is the one that's on here. And it, it doesn't take quite as long as to download as the new one. Yeah, that's what we have. Yeah, we have. Okay. So we can just use yours. Because the new one does, definitely does take a while to download. So if you guys want to, if you want to Google Cura 15, um, mm -hmm. and then where it says view all versions, you can download that version. Mm -hmm. Or we can find one of these dongles. But we'll need to have at least one of these to be able to print because we have to transfer the files from the computer and then back to the printer. And they should be small and either like pink or blue. I can go grab one and, and I'm sure what I mean. This one. I have it as an executable, but I don't think I downloaded it. So I think if one of the issues we ran into last time is some people were downloading it off of the internet. You have to press it hard to get it to stay. But it'll go in. Um, so some people were doing it off the web, some people were doing it off the SD drives. It was uh, frustrating. So I have like the Cura 15.04.6 executable. But what I actually have installed is Cura 2.6.2. Okay, so yeah, we want to do Cura 15 because we have, um, we've been trying to keep up with uh, the new versions of Cura and they're coming out so quick that we can't update our user manuals quick enough. So we want to make sure that you have the user manuals to go back and refer to. So that's why we're suggesting to download that one. And it'll work with Cura, Cura 2.7 and I could even do the training with that if you want to. Um, but that's why we're going to do Cura 15. Do you guys have any luck tracking down um, one of the readers? I couldn't find one of the, the examples. We don't need a reader because our computers have many SD drives in them. Oh, they do? Okay, great. Yeah. Well, then you can just plug in the micro SD into what, your computer then, and we can just get care from there. Yeah, so we don't, we don't even need the dongles. If you can plug the micro SD card into it. Yes, it's on all of these micro SD cards. So there, on either, every one of these, there's a user manual and the uh, and Cura. Super six this. No, no, use your SD card. Yeah, the number six. Yeah, that's the number six. 
six, the number that's everything's lowercase with it. And then next, and let's get it installed. Do you guys find it? Do you find it on there? We're installing right now. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so you'll have to have Cura installed on um, at least one computer to be able to use it, on, um, to be able to use Cura. And you don't have to have it on like all the student machines because the students can actually go to like one machine in your classroom to be able to, to actually slice all their models. And, and sometimes that's easier too because if you have different logins and, and students have different logins, every time that student logs into that account, they're going to have to set up Cura for the first time when they log into it. So um, that's why you want to help. Uh, it helps a lot to just have one machine. So then if the settings get kind of messed up, you'll know there's only one machine that you have to change instead of, you know, 25 or 30 different computers. Um, try to figure out like which one doesn't have the correct setting. So I, I would definitely suggest starting off with like one machine. We don't, we don't really work in, we are in a one-to-one -one, and so everybody does their own thing on their own computers. We don't have like a classroom computer or a makerspace computer or anything like that. Okay. So we would have the kids install it and work um, on their own computer if we wanted them, if we want them to learn how to print. Now if we're doing the printing for them, that then they can send us the files which is what I'm starting with, but I would like, I mean, our goal, I think, eventually is for the kids to be able to print. Yeah, definitely. And, and I, was, I was just saying as a suggestion to start off with, it can be a whole lot of information to take in at once. Um, but if you're having them all install it at one time, then that, that helps too, to make sure they all have the correct settings at the same time. And we have a bunch of videos too, and we could even do um, mm -hmm. like a training session or something like that with some students that were having trouble. Like that's what we're here for. So um, we have videos that'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to install Cura. It's in the user manual how to install it too. So um, yeah, we, we're there to help you out. It just helps. And we've had some experiences before of an entire class having uh, Cura downloaded and then some of the computers getting mixed up and then uh, the settings getting incorrect. And then students have had a hard time trying to figure out like which computers are correct and which ones aren't. They had a How's it going with the install process? Is it to where it says select new machine? Okay. When it gets to where it says select new machine, that's where we want to stop. Because it'll say like start new machine, select new machine, that start new printer wizard. That's where we're all going to start installing because we want to make sure that we have all the correct settings set up um, in Cura, which is where it can be kind of difficult because if you just go next, 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 all the way through it, um, for that machine settings, it's all going to be uh, incorrectly set up. So just where it says add new machine is where we all want to get. It says select your machine. Yeah. That works too. That's when you hit next one more time. That's what it says. Now mine's not there. I might have just hit next, next, next. You can go up to the top where it says machine and then click add new machine. So if you've already, if you're already in Cura and you see the Cura window, that's what you can do. This is what it is. Sure. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, so I'll share my screen with you all and I'll show you. It looks like this. And then that's all the settings that we're going to set up for the printer itself. So do you guys all see this, this screen right here? I think I heard it now. <laughs> It says select your machine. Yeah, like this this step right here, like that. Yes. Okay. So do are we all this one then? Do we all see? Yes. This one? Yeah? Okay, awesome. Yes. So we're gonna go ahead and click other. This is not one of those on the list. I think I messed up and went too far. Okay, that's fine. You can click machine and then add new machine right here. Okay. Hold on a second, let me. Sure. Machine. machine and then add new machine. machine. And if it says Ultimaker across the back, then that means that um, that you it was like next, 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 all the way through, and the wrong machine is selected. Other. Okay. Thank yeah. you. All right. Sweet. So then other, and then next, and then this is the most important step. This Mendel is what we have to select, and that is the type of G code that this uses. So M E N D E L. Well, make her Mendel at the end. Thank you. Y'all see it? Y'all got it? Yeah. All of y'all got it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
and then we'll hit next and then finish. Woohoo! But there are two more things that we gotta do. So uh, we're gonna set these settings up and then we're gonna set the build size up, uh, our printer itself. So these settings, these are the print settings that the printer is going to be using. And you can see that when you scroll over each one of them, it'll have a little paragraph that kind of explains it. But I'll go into a little bit more layman terms of exactly what it means. So the layer height, that's how close each one of the layers are. Because this is basically a crazy robotic hot glue gun. That's for instance. So the layer are each one of these layers. And as it's gonna stack layer by layer by layer by layer, it's gonna build the 3D model that you guys made in Tinkercad. So the layer height is how close those layers are. And the highest quality that you can do is 0 0.1. So that means it'll be really close together and look at really high quality. And the lowest quality is 0 0.3. So the layers will be a little bit farther away and it'll print faster, but it won't look as good. Um, but 0 0.2 is a great place to start. That's what we normally print in. That's a good medium quality. But you can set that to whatever you'd like. And then the shell thickness, that's gonna be the thickness of the outside part of your model. And that has to be at least two shells, which is a multiple of your nozzle size. So that's gonna be 0 0.8. And then our nozzle size, which is down here in the bottom, is gonna be 0 0.4. And you'll see that it turns yellow and then it turns red. That yellow means like, I don't know, and then red is like, whoa. So uh, the clear is what you're looking for. And uh, it'll have those like colors that will light up when something is, is wrong. And it knows that something's uh, incorrectly typed in. So once we have those set, then we're gonna change the bottom and top thickness. So that's literally the bottom thickness of your model. And we usually change that to be the same as our shell thickness. And you can increase the shell thickness and the bottom and top thickness. You just wanna increase it in multiples of four to make sure that the layers layer down correctly um, and, and look nice. So now the print speed, that is gonna be 50 or slower. So you don't wanna print faster than 50 because it can actually try to print so fast that stuff can peel up before the next layer lays down on top of it and it can cause all kinds of issues. These can print as fast as 120 millimeters a second, um, but they're a lot louder when they print that fast and they have to be tuned perfectly. So um, we always suggest printing at 50 millimeters or slower and you can print slower if you want it to look a little bit nicer. So if you wanted to slow it down to like 20 or 30, you totally could. And then next is the printing temperature. So that's going to be 220. And that is the temperature that the PLA melts at. And that's the material that it uses. So this is polylactic acid, and it's biodegradable corn plastic that it's melting. So that's why we want to melt it at 220 to make sure that that's enough to completely liquefy it, and then it'll re-solidify back into the shape that you design on the computer. And then the bed temperature is going to be zero, because it does not have a heated bed. And we're gonna make that go away here in a second, but we're setting it to zero just so um, we know to get rid of it. Because you, you can have a heated bed if it's a lot bigger build area. Um, it helps to, to help prevent warping and stuff like that. But printing with PLA on a small area, even if you take over this whole space, it doesn't need to have a heated bed. Like this box right here was printed on there. This is the full size that it can print. So you don't have to have one. And then support type, we're gonna go ahead and click on this and say everywhere. So it will automatically generate support in case it needs it. So if you're trying to print a model that doesn't have supports and it needs it, it can turn into like a giant pile of spaghetti while it's trying to print. Because it's almost like if you're printing a doorway and it's trying to bridge across the doorway, if it doesn't have supports there, it could like droop down and hang down and it wouldn't go across. And then you can just pop the supports out um, when your model's done. And that's why you, we have the toolkit that came with you guys printers that has pliers and tweezers and clippers in there um, for you guys to use. And then the diameter is 1.75. And that's the diameter of our filament right here. If you have all the set, can you give me just a second so I can set mine up? Sure. Okay. That's yeah, going to look just like this. Okay. Um, the other thing, uh, Drew, we, we really do only have about 25 more minutes. So while I appreciate you explaining everything, um, I think if you just take us through and tell us, hey, this is how you set everything up, and then if we could get, I know you're saying it's the video, but if we could get like a manual that um, has all that for us. So the, you know, so the manual on every one of the SD cards, and we've got enough time to get through everything. Um, okay, just about, making sure. Last time we didn't, so I just want to make sure. Yeah, no, it's totally fine. So this, this right here is a super important step. That's why I wanted to talk through like every one of those, because it's really important yeah. that every one of those settings are correct for the printer to print properly. So then that's why we went over them all. Okay, so they're telling me what to set up. Is this yep. the screen we were on? Okay. Layer height. Okay. 
Okay, ready. You got it? Okay, awesome. No, 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 I'm not ready. I'm telling Andrew I'm ready. Okay. I can I can walk you through everything too. I, I've got all memorized. No, no, I'm good. They're, they got me. Okay. Oh, yeah, just let them tell me. Four point seven. One point seven five. Okay. Is that right? Does that look right? Yeah. Okay. Do we save? Is there a save or something? Nope, it's saved automatically. That's why um, when you first open it, it's saved uh, as the profile in Cura. But if you log into another account, um, for instance, like in a computer lab or something like that, then the first time that student logs in, they'll have to reset all of these settings to make sure. Yeah, we don't have computer labs. Everybody has their own computer. Yeah, that's totally fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click that it's in the, it's and on that machine settings. Go so up at the top, we'll see machine and then machine settings. <laughs> and then we're going to set the build size of our printer. So that's what we're going to set right here. So our build size is going to be 125 by 150 by 100 tall. And that is about five inches by six inches by four inches. So it's about five inches across by six inches down by about four inches tall, or the size of this cube right here. And that's the maximum size that you have uh, set up. So then now we're going to also uncheck this heated bed, and that will make the bed temperature zero go away because we don't need it. So this is the screenshot that is on every one of the SD cards that you can find that has all of these settings here, all these settings here to make sure that you have Cura all set up correctly. And uh, that screenshot's inside the Cura folder on all the screenshot, uh, on all the cards. There's also the user manual on there too that walk, will walk you step by step through this. And then I'm gonna send you guys this video as well. Um, and we have videos on our website in our troubleshooting section that will walk you through step by step by step um, how to install all this. And you guys can call us, you can email us. We're here to help to make sure that you get everything installed correctly. All right, I think we're all caught up. You guys got it? Okay, yeah. awesome. so we'll click okay. So now we have Cura all set up like it should be. So now once Cura is all set, that is that second step that we're gonna use. So go ahead and go to Tinkercad and the model that you created. And I'll also go to Tinkercad. I have one that was um, sent to me, so it's not my design. Um, so it's not under my design, if that makes sense, but I assume I can skip onto it. That's fine. Yeah, just have, just have the uh, the file open in Tinkercad, and I'll show you guys how to get something from Tinkercad um, to the 3D printer. Okay, great. Do we need to take notes on this, or is this also in the manual? Uh, in the manual, it has, we on our website, we have how to export from common 3D printing files, uh, and there is a step-by-step -step instruction on how to export from Tinkercad, Onshape, Fusion 360, um, uh, SketchUp and Inventor. Yeah, so once you have your file, then we're gonna export this file for 3D printing. And that's found over here where it says export. So right here, when you click export, it's gonna even say download for 3D printing. And you can see right here, it's gonna be download. And you wanna download it as a .stl file type. And you can rename your file up here before you download it by double clicking up here on the name. And then you can have it named whatever you want. So we'll download that as our .stl. Mm -hmm. 
And then as long as it's a .stl or .obj format, then it'll print the best. Um, you can print in other types of formats, but those two are the best to pull into Cura um, because they have the, the, the best outline of a three-dimensional model. So do you all get your, uh, your model downloaded? I don't know where it went, but oh. Okay. Yeah, it's in your downloads folder. One. Or wherever your, your uh, computer knows. Okay, got it. Yeah, when I so once you have it downloaded, now we're going to go back to Cura. So go ahead and go back to Cura, and then we're going to click load right here in Cura. And then here's where we're going to go select our model. So I'm going to go ahead and go to um, a downloads folder, and then download it. And then you'll see, you might have a little preview of it too, when you click open, you'll open your, your file inside of Cura. And let me know when you guys all have your file inside there. Look at mine, I'll do it with you. Click on load right there. Yep. Right here. I'm in Cura. Click on load. And then click on your downloads folder under this PC. And you should be able to see it if you scroll. So this is that second step of 3D printing. So the first step, you designed it in Tinkercad. And this is that second step, and that's putting it inside of Cura. The so dude. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Loaded? Uh, we're still working. There we go. So let me know when you all have a model inside there. And if you want to get rid of the robot, you can click on the robot and then hit delete, and that will get rid of the robot that it first starts with. Because you can also print as many models as were fit inside of the build area. So you can print as many models in there as long as they are yellow. You can print four or five student models at once on one 3D printer. No, no, if you want it to be plugged in. Yeah. That was an invisible space. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Like, where's all the stuff that comes with this? Because we definitely have to. Okay. Um, are we supposed to have a cord that plugs our computers into the printer? No. I mean the power? Power cords? You will need a power cord, yes. You want to see if you can. Do you guys have power cords for the Can you show us what they look like real quick? Uh yes. They look like this. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. And they have a little uh, light on them. The power brick. I think it is maximized. And it's important that you have the correct power bricks too, because they have to be 12 volt power bricks. Um, otherwise, the printer won't print correctly, and it could actually fry the board if you plug in the incorrect ones. So, do you guys have the power supply units? We're gonna go look for them. Okay. Um. So, can you show us? Drew, right now we're looking at your um, screen. Can we see, we see the camera on the side, but it's just small. Can we see your screen large so we can look at what you're showing us one more time? Well, we're talking about Cura right now. So I want to make sure that everybody has their stuff inside of Cura. That's why everybody, I have Yeah, we got it. We all, it's all there. Okay, you guys do? Okay, great. So with Cura, you can add, like I said, as many models as you want. You can say load and load as many models as will fit inside of Cura because they'll, as long as they turn yellow, and you can scroll in and out using the scroll wheel, you can hold the right mouse button to move around, and you can move models around in here too, as long as they're inside this blue checker mark area. If they get outside of this area, then they're gonna turn gray, which means that they are outside of the build service and they won't print. Um, so when you're moving stuff around, you can also see here's the time that it's gonna take to print. 
And that is really accurate too. So this time is really close to being accurate about how long it's actually going to take. So it's going to be within about 10 minutes of that time. And you can totally print stuff overnight. You can print stuff for 150 hours. It's totally fine. Um, as, as long as it's got filament in it, it'll print. So you can also rotate your model. So this is something that you guys might need to do is click this rotate button and then rotate your model so the flattest side is pointing down because print orientation is really important. Like if I flip this over like that, it, it'll have to print with a lot of supports and stuff like that. It's not really the best design as this one is right here. So like when this slices, it can have some different types of supports. You can also scale your model down by clicking scale and you can click on your model and then you can scale it down to be smaller. So if you're not worried about the actual size of your model, so that's why we have the digital calipers so you can prototype and make some the exact model. So you can design something to be about a tenth of a millimeter and then print it to be that, that quality. Uh, and that and that type. So if you wanted to make everything from a gearing system for a robot to a prosthetic hand, uh, you can do that to be those exact uh, specifications. But if you're not worried about that, you can change um, the scale by clicking on here or by changing the scale on this. So one is 100, so if you wanted to be twice as big, you can say two. But see, this is now uh, gray, so it's not gonna print. So maybe we'll just say about like 0 0.5. So now it's half the size. And you can see my time went down here. So why don't you guys scale down your models to where they take about 30 minutes to print. And you can also see the, the, the different views and stuff like that on what type of supports you have by clicking view mode and then layers. And you can see if it's gonna print with supports and how it's gonna print with supports. And this is also the same view that your students can use if they wanna actually code the G code to change the color and, and stuff like that. So when you're looking here, you can see this turquoise, that is the support structure that it automatically generated because it realized that it's gonna need that. Because if you scroll down here, you can see layer by layer what every layer of the 3D printer is gonna do. And here is that infill pattern, that cross hatch pattern, that's what this fill density is right there that you can change. If you wanna make something stronger, um, then you can change this value and make it even 50%. And you can see that this is gonna increase inside here. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, that, that's all good. Um, we have one power cord right now. Um, okay. If you could help show us how to thread the filament and get that stuff. Totally. So we'll go ahead and click this and then delete it. So do you guys have a model that is about under 30 minutes to print? Yep, mine's five minutes. Okay, great. Um, one thing to keep in mind though too is if it gets too tiny, it might look like it's gonna be able to print but it's gonna print really, really tiny and it might turn into like a little glob. So just so you know, if it gets too small, it might look like it's gonna print, but it might not print out. Um, there, it can only print about a 10th of a millimeter as it's stacking and stuff like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this model to the SD card. So if you have your model, your five minute model, go ahead and here where it says save to save it to the SD card. And this save toolpath, that's the G code. This is that, that second step. And we're doing the third step right now where we're transferring it to the printer. So we're gonna click on the, the SD card, which is NWA3D, and I have my foot right here, and I'm gonna click save. And then that's saved to the SD card. And now I can eject the, that SD card from my computer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. sorry. And then once you can eject it, you have the audio. So did you guys see that step? No, we missed. Yeah. So you'll click save toolpath right here, and then that's where you're gonna save your file to the SD card. And this is that third step, that transfer step. So you're gonna click on the SD card, so your NWA 3D, and then you, you can name it whatever you want on that SD card, that's totally fine, and then click save. Okay, hey, sorry, Drew, a uh, question here. I, I got the, S, the, uh, the SD card save thing, but my next screen says, um, okay, never mind. Did you get it? One sec. Like I, I say, I saved it, but then when I look at the path, the file path, like I don't see it in the SD card. You'll well, it depends on where you saved it in the SD card. So did you did you save it to the SD card when you saved it? Yeah. I mean, I just clicked the icon that you clicked, and then it says save to e whatever. Yeah. And if you click, it, and it might look like a little icon too, and if you click that, it might save it straight to the SD card. So if it doesn't pop up and give you the file path, that's okay. Like if yours says save SD right here. Oh, okay. And it might too, because like if you have 
So I have the uh, the other one plugged in, but if I have this plugged in with a uh, a regular SD card, it'll say just save from SD. So here, if I eject this real quick, I'll show you guys what I mean. Because um, I have the USB one in right now, that's why it doesn't it has that save option. Um, so then if you're saving it, you can just click save to SD and you can also right click on it. So with, on your computer, it might look just like this, where it says SD right here on the side, like that. Toolpath to SD, is that what yours says? And you can right click and that's where you can save the G code wherever you'd like. But if you just click SD, it will automatically just save it straight to your SD card. And you can even hit eject right here to eject it. So do you guys see this right here? Does it say saved on the bottom of your screen? Say it again. You all see that? Okay. Go, go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw that. Okay. So what, do, do you, does it say SD right here? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So when you click it, it's automatically just going to save it straight to the SD card. And if you right click, then you can say save G code and you can choose exactly where you want to save it. So you can have like a folder for third grade or a folder for like first period, a folder for second period. And then you can save models in different folders if you'd like. Um, and you just save them straight to the SD card, which is what we're doing right here. And then you hit save. So you can either, it's going to happen when you replace it because I've been naming it the same thing. So you can either Click right here where it saves the toolpath straight to the SD card, um, or you can right click and say save to SD, whichever one it does. But that is that, uh, that third step where you're going to transfer your files to the printer. So we'll go ahead and eject it. And then once we have it ejected, then we're going to take that SD card and we're going to put the SD card in the front of all of the printers. And then all we'd have to do is plug in the printers and hit print if they had filament loaded. That's all we'd have to do. And that's that fourth step where you literally just turn it on and hit print. Can you show us how to hit print one more time? Well, did you get it in the SD card first? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to make sure that they're plugged in. And then when they're plugged in, then I'll walk through those different steps too. So once you have them plugged in, you'll it has to have the filament loaded. So do you guys have filament loaded in the printers? Can you show us real quick how to load it? Because we won't always have them loaded. Definitely. Um, and you can leave them loaded even when they're off. That's totally fine. So do you guys have the spool holders? Like yeah. That? Okay, great. So when you're not using the filament, you want to pull it through these holes in the side to make sure that it doesn't come uh, untangled. Because if it tangles up, just like fishing line or weed eater line, it'll get tangled on the spool. So only when you're ready to print do you pull it out of here. And then you're going to clip the end using the clippers that comes with it. And you always want to clip the end to get any melted filament off of the end of the nozzle. So you'll clip the end of it like that. You can also break it or use scissors to clip it. And then you're going to feed this into right here, into this lever. So that's where it's going to feed in. So the, the filament's always going to be on this side, feeding into this part right here. And you'll squeeze this lever here, not all the way, just a little bit. And then you'll feed the filament through this hole and then all the way through this white tube, all the way through until it won't go anymore. So you'll squeeze this and then keep pushing. And then push and push and push. And that's why it helps to have it clipped at an angle, because it helps it to fit through this part a little bit better. And then you'll see, you'll just keep pushing it and pushing it all the way through until it won't go anymore. And then it's loaded. So it's going to go about eight inches all the way through this tube, all the way to the end, until it won't move anymore. So now, I know that we've got like three minutes left. So if uh, the printers are level, then once you have the filament loaded, you should be able to just hit print and it'll print. But there's a couple of things that could go on. If the filament isn't pushed all the way to the end, then the filament won't be coming out to make sure that those levels are sticking layer by layer by layer 
Um, and also, if it's not level, if it's too far away, it's like toothpaste on a toothbrush. So if you're trying to uh, put toothpaste on your toothbrush and you hold it into the air, it's just going to go all over the place, and it's not going to stick to the build plate. So that nozzle has to be close enough for each layer to stick, layer by layer by layer by layer. So if it's too far away, it's just gonna turn into a pile of spaghetti or knock models loose or warp up on the sides. But if it's too close, just like wedging toothpaste into a toothbrush, not any filament is gonna come out at all. So we can go over leveling um, another time. Uh, and also I'll send you a video of it that you can walk through, but hopefully they're level now because you don't have to level them very much. And I know that we level them like the first training and stuff that we did. So hopefully once we get them loaded, we can just hit print and they'll work. So let me know when you guys have the filament pushed all the way through and we'll be ready to print. He just said go ahead and print it. We don't really have time to do all that. They should be calibrated. Yeah, they should be good to go. So once you have the filament pushed all the way in, then you're gonna tap this button. Once you have that SD card in there, that fourth step, you just tap this button and then scroll down until it says, Refresh card. Can you hold on? Sure. Hold on a second. I got to catch up with everything. I was out getting all the stuff that was not together correctly. And you do a file save as I haven't saved it yet. Okay. Okay. And go to your Now go go your SD card. Go to your Explorer. File Explorer. See if it's in the. Oh my God. Okay. See it there? There it is. Okay. Okay, so now you can, I think you can take it out and it has to go in the printer, right? Okay, got it. So you eject that and then that pops in and clicks in and clicks out right here underneath the knob. Oh. And it only goes in one way and it clicks in and clicks out. And then now, all you have to do once you put that in there, if the filament's loaded and the bill plate's level, then you literally just tap the button, go to refresh SD card to refresh it. We're not watching because we're not quite ready yet. No, it's fine. I'm just, I'm letting you guys know right now since it's 324. So, um, and then- yeah, yeah, wait, I, I'm like way behind. I got to catch up. So we're not seeing me right now because I'm using my computer. So give, if you just give me just a second, that'd be great. How did you eject? Right. I'm on the drive right here. Uh, and just do eject here. Okay, thank you. Where, how do you get it out of there? Did I put it? How does that get it out? Did it just come out when you eject it? That was awkward. That's pretty cool. Needs a little. It's not in there. Is it not in there? Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah, because I already had the the software on my computer. That's why. I saved it to the thumb drive. Yeah. That's it. You really could use a little tool for that. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, so let me try this again. So I'm in here. Let me do, take this out. <laughs> SD, F, all right. FD. <sighs> So, Drew, if mine just says heating, does that mean it's preparing to print? If I was able to find the file and everything? You should see the temperature going up on uh, above the nozzle. So you'll see a temperature that says 220 set above the nozzle, and then underneath it, you'll right see the temperature. So do you see that on the printer? Because it has to uh, so be coming back. OK, we can see you again. All right. Um, so. At this point, um, what do we do once we put the file into the 3D printer? So then now we're going to print. So this is that fourth step. So what you're going to do is you're going to tap the button. And then when you tap it, you'll scroll down to where it says refresh SD card. Okay. Go to where it says print from SD and select your model. 
So there's a foot right there. That's the one that I saved. And you can also go to test. Be black. <laughs> and then when you tap on it, it's going to heat up to 220. It's going to zero itself out, and then it's going to start printing layer by layer by layer. What did you say to do after after um, hitting print? Nothing. It's done. Nothing. The robot's just going to go. And how does it? Okay, it'll start once it's heated up. It's gonna it's gonna heat up and then it's gonna zero itself out and then it's gonna start printing layer by layer by layer by layer. Oh, I see. Okay, so it says two twenty degrees and I see it rising up to two twenty. Okay. And then if something isn't sticking properly, then that is probably has to do with the bill plate itself not being level. And if you guys have a couple more minutes, I can show you how to do that. Um, do you guys So you always want to watch the first couple of layers to make sure that they're sticking. The first, first couple of layers are the most important one. So you can print for hundreds of hours straight as long as those first couple of layers are sticking well. And if they're not, then there's a problem with the filament loading through or a problem with the machine or a problem with it not being level. And mo most likely 90% of it is because it's not level. So what do we do if it messes up printing? Can we stop it and start over? Unplug it. Unplug it? Yep. Is one of them messed up? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> it's no big deal. Uh, part of 3D printing is, is troubleshooting, and that's why we're here to help. So should we, I'm guessing we should take. What exactly well, was the print, did the printer do wrong? Letter, I think you know it, it just heated up, and I don't know if it was hot enough. Kind of like with the, um, you know, with the. Sorry, I can't, I can't really hear you very well. You're breaking up. Um, so I was printing a name, and the first letter of the name, I think you know, like when a laminator kind of heats up, the first thing that it prints like kind of doesn't have the same adhesiveness as the rest of it. So it, the first letter didn't stick, and so then the others were getting caught behind it, and now mine's just stuck. To stop printing, so I just unplug it. Yeah, go ahead. Um, it. So that's from the bill plate not being level, and I can show you how to do that if you have. Oh, a minutes. Okay. Yeah. yeah two minutes. Yeah, I, I got a minute. Okay. So go ahead and, and unplug it, and then clear off all that stuff in the bill plate. So use the scraper and clear all that off. I'll go ahead and stop mine from printing too. And then scrape all that stuff off the bill plate. You said use a scraper, but we don't have any of our tools. You can also take this entire these clips off and take this off and bend it. Yeah, you guys don't want to try to track down all the tools because all the toolkits and stuff are essential to 3D printing. Um, because having these scrapers and the pliers and the digital calipers will help you um, have a lot more success and not get burned. Because um, reaching in and grabbing stuff with your fingers and can be can be kind of tricky. So that's why it helps to have the tool. So let me know when you have the bill plate cleared off and I'll walk you through leveling. You got it? Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and plug it back in. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap this button and then, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I had I was emailing to find the tools. Oh, nope, nope. Wait. There we go. Okay. So you'll tap you'll tap the main button, and then you're gonna go to where it says setup, and then you're gonna go to auto home. And auto home will home the X, Y, and Z to zero, and that's what we're gonna set right now is the Z height. So when it stops moving, then we're gonna go to where it says disable motors and tap that. And then you need to track down a piece of paper. Any sort of scrap paper will work, and you'll just fold it in half, either hot dog or hamburger, whatever you want to do, and go ahead and fold it. And then let me know when it, you have the motors disabled and you got a piece of paper. My um blue thing came off. 
Yeah, it just came off. Okay, I'm just gonna stop it. Do you want to grab a piece of paper and we can level yours? <laughs> We're still all getting catching up with you. I just had to take mine off. Yeah, it's fine. How do you get this off? How do you get the stuff off the blue, the blue plate if you don't have the scraping tool? If you don't have the scraper, you can take this whole plate off and actually flex it a little bit to be able to get it off. But it's probably going to be difficult to to get it off if it doesn't come off with flexing and you don't have the scraper, because um, it can uh, get underneath your fingernails and stuff if you try to pop it up with your fingernails. Be kind of fun. That. It's okay. I'll I'll find the tools later. doing two of them needed to be level how are the other ones doing that you guys got my blue plate came off so it messed up the printing like it came off when it was moving yeah do you have these clips is it clipped on it was <laughs> yeah because if the clips are too far to the side when it moves back this way it can pop them off like when it's moving so you gotta uh -huh. make sure it moves freely back and forth right here you guys really have power supplies for two of them? Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. I was waiting for you guys to all be on the same the same page. I thought you guys wanted me to wait for everybody to catch up. You can go ahead. Okay. So once you have the uh, the the printer auto home, and then you've went to disable motor, so you'll tap the button, and then you'll say set up, and then auto home. Whoop, auto home, and then once it auto homes and it stops moving. That means it's at zero. So then you'll go to disable motors, and that allows you to move the motors around. So I'm going to pick my printer up and show you, and I'll be moving it around. But you want to leave yours flat on the table because it can mess up the uh, the Z height by picking it up and moving it around. But mine doesn't matter because I'm on the other side of the of uh, the country. So um, you're going to get your folded piece of paper, and then you're going to put that underneath the nozzle. So you're going to pull the nozzle out and you're going to push this forward and then you're going to get the piece of paper between it. And you're going to kind of pull the nozzle to this front corner. And then the paper is going to be between the nozzle and the bill plate. And if it doesn't fit in there, you can push down on the bill plate and then fit it underneath. So you'll have the nozzle and then you're going to have a piece of paper and then the flat blue lock build surface and then you'll have the build surface. So it'll look just like this. So nozzle, paper, build surface, clip down. And then what you're going to do is you're going to adjust these little wing nuts right here. So in really small increments, there are three of these. So we're going to adjust each one of these to make sure that the paper moves and you feel tension between it. So you want to feel enough tension to where it's dragging and you feel it vibrating on the piece of paper because that's the thickness of two tenths of, uh, of a millimeter. And that's what a folded sheet of paper is. Um, if it's too close, it won't move at all, or it'll buckle the piece of paper. If it's too far away, you'll barely feel anything as you're moving it, or nothing at all. So we'll adjust it by small increments, one by one. So we're going to do this first corner first. And when you loosen this, it's actually going to tighten it on the top by pushing it up. And when you tighten it, 
it's going to make it down and pull it down farther away. So we're going to turn this clockwise to go tighter or counterclockwise to go looser. So this is really loose on top. So I'm going to turn mine about a fourth of a turn clockwise and then test it. And then you want to feel it dragging and like hear it and feel it dragging and vibrating. There we go. Now mine feels pretty good. And that's what you want to have. And when you feel it dragging on that first corner, then you're going to move this to this second corner back here. So everybody go ahead and get this first corner to where you feel the paper dragging and you feel a good amount of tension on it. And then let me know when you got it. And it can be kind of tricky. That's why you want to do a small increment and then test it. And then you might go too tight. So you might want to go the other way and then test it and then a little bit and then test it until you feel it dragging. And let me know when you got the first corner. How you guys doing? You think you got that first corner? Yeah. I drew a quick question. It it matters a lot which order we do the corners in. Uh, it doesn't really matter. No. Okay. Um, we just want to make sure that they're all the same consistency, and you want to do one at a time to make it a lot easier. And it's a triangle, so when you tighten one, it's going to push the other two up, and when you loosen one, it's going to push them down. So you're trying to get the triangle to get the plane flat, because there are only three screws. So do you guys have this first one? Is it okay if I talk into your computer? Yeah, you want to be able to drag it and feel it dragging. And it's easier to do this first corner first. That's why we always start with that one. Because it's in the open and you can kind of get a feel for it. Okay. We're working on it. Okay. And it can be kind of tricky. Uh, once we're done, Drew, can we try printing again? Uh, yes. Once you have all three of them uh, that feel about the same amount of tension above each one of them and you feel that dragon, then yeah, definitely. So once you get the first one, then we're going to move to the second one. Oh, my camera going out. Sorry about that, turn this off. So then you can move this all the way over and then you'll do the same thing on this back corner with this one. So this one's really loose even though the front one was tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one a little bit until it gets tight, about the same amount of tension. There we go. And then you can do the inside one. And when you move this to the inside, it's kind of hard to get your hands in here. So for the inside one, it helps to pull it out and then adjust it a little bit and then push it back and then test it and then pull it out and then adjust it a little bit and then put it back and then test it. Oh, we're pretty close. And then pull it out and then adjust it a tiny bit and then pull it back and then test it. There we go. Until you feel it dragging, almost like you set your finger down on the piece of paper and then you're moving that piece of paper and it's dragging on your finger. That's about how much tension you want to have. Quite a bit. Hard to get your finger on the last one. <laughs> and this is 90% of the issues with the printer. Um, but once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. It's just hard to first get the hang of it. 
So it's, it's hard. And that's why we're here. And that's why we do these trainings to help you to be able to level it and make sure that it's level and printing right. This was the hardest concept for me to get when I started 3D printing. You have to move the, the build plate out so you can access the screw. The screw moves with it. Does that make sense? Say again. You guys need any help? Yeah. Do you guys have a question? Can I help you with something? So um, we're just, that last screw is a little tricky to get to. So I was just yeah. um, helping my you have, you have to pull the plate out a little bit, right? Yeah, you can pull it all the way forward and then you can reach in and get to it. And then you can push it back and then test it. Yeah. You really have to get your fingers in there. Here. <laughs> Mine does not seem to be heating up. How do you make it heat up? Did you select your model? Oh, you guys select your model to get it to heat up? Because that chooses the model to print. So go ahead and tap the button and then go to where it says refresh SD card and that will refresh it. And then when you go to print from SD, you'll see your model on there. And then you okay. just tap the button to pick the model. I was waiting for it to heat up before I did that. <laughs> uh, when you select it, it'll heat up and start printing on its own. Okay, got it. How's it going with leveling on the other ones? I mean, I was able to level it, but now um, my filament's not coming out of the of the needle. Of the nozzle? That might mean yeah. it's too close. So if you don't see anything coming out, then that might mean it's too close to the bill plate, and that's why there's nothing coming out. Is it moving around and there's nothing coming out of it? See it coming out now as it's moving? Uh, no, I think you're right. I think it was too close, but I have to run. I'm so sorry. I'm going to try again later. Yeah, that's fine. And that's why we're here, too. So if you guys, if you guys are having any trouble, then we're here to help. And we can do like another session that's just about leveling if you guys want to do another one. I know that we're, we're uh, like over our time here. So if you guys want to do another training like next week or even um, tomorrow or Friday, I'm open at the same time. Um, so if you guys want to do that again, we totally can. Okay. Are you guys ready for us to? Okay. You guys okay. Thank you so much, Drew. I'm going to go ahead and sign off, and then um, I will be in touch with uh, when we want to get back with some more training. Yeah, I'll send you guys these videos. And like I said, if you guys have any trouble at all, don't hesitate to contact us. Like you can call us, okay. you can email us, however you can get a hold of us. We're here to help. Okay. Thank you so much, Drew. Right. See y'all. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.